A business purchased for $535,000 in the year 2000 was sold in 2007 for $800,000. What was the annual rate of return for this investment? So we've been working with the compound interest formula, A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus R over N raised to the NT power. And although this is not a compound interest problem, it is a question asking us for this annual rate of return, um, which is our R value, what we were considering our interest rate before. So we can think of this annually as N being equal to 1. In other words, there aren't any compoundings in one year. So if we take a look at our model, then our model becomes 1 plus r divided by 1 raised to the 1 times t power. So this just turns into a is equal to p times the quantity 1 plus r raised to the t power. Also what we call simple interest. I see no need to memorize it though as a second formula. Again, this is really just coming from our compound interest formula here, but allowing n to equal 1. So our principal amount invested would be represented by the initial amount that the business was worth, what we purchased it for in the beginning, which was $535,000. And then our accumulated value, our after amount, is the $800,000 that the business was worth when we sold it. So it's like we have a $535,000 investment that grew to $800,000. And then our time measured in years is a time of seven years. So we're presented with this equation to solve. So we'll divide both sides by 535,000. Remember, you want to keep this value in it, its exact form. So either an exact fraction or an exact decimal. So if you use your calculator to simplify 800,000 divided by 535,000, it looks like the best we can do is simplify it to the fraction 160 divided by 107. Again, we don't want a decimal here or we don't want a rounded decimal here because we don't want to uh, decrease the accuracy of our final answer. But we've been solving exponential equations. However, it's important that you take a look at this equation and realize for a second that this is not an exponential equation. Even though we've been busy working on compound interest problems, and generally when we do look at compound interest, we are often solving for the exponent, solving for time, which makes it an exponential equation. But on this problem, notice that the exponent is not a variable. The exponent is 7. So this is not exponential. And I mention this because it's important to realize that we're not going to use logarithms to solve this equation, since the equation is not an exponential equation. In fact, this equation would be very similar to a, a simpler equation like, for example, x cubed is equal to 5. Think about this. This is a polynomial equation, and how would you solve x cubed is equal to 5? I hope you would say that you would take the cube root of both sides. Likewise, if I said I wanted you to solve x to the fourth is equal to 7, hopefully you would say, oh, I'm going to take the fourth root of both sides. Remember, those are inverse operations. So likewise, in this problem, we're trying to undo this quantity raised to the seventh power. So therefore, we will take the seventh root of both sides to undo the power of seven. So now, let me go to the other side. We have the seventh root of 160 divided by 107 is equal to 1 plus r. So we can simply subtract 1 and we're in business. The seventh root of 160 divided by 107 minus 1 will be our r value. And then we will go to our calculator to get a decimal approximation. A few notes about your calculator. You may not remember where uh, your radicals are, are located because on your main calculator you can do a square root but you have to kind of hunt to find the um, the roots that have an index other than a 2. So you can either go on your calculator and find your math button on the graphing calculators on a TI-83 or a TI-84. If you go to math and if you look at number 5, number 5 has this symbol which represents you get to pick the index, 
x represents any index. So if you want to use this, you would need to type 7 first, because 7 is your index, then go to math, then choose number 5, and then you would be able to input the 7th root of 160 divided by 107. And if that seems too tedious for you, the other alternative would be to enter this as the quantity 160 divided by 107 raised to the 1 7th power, because that is equivalent to the 7th root. So you can enter it one of two ways on your calculator. And it looks like I'm getting point 0 0.059 as a rounded answer. So multiplying by 100 or converting this decimal into a percentage, that would result in a 5.9% annual return on our investment. So going back to the beginning, if our original investment was 535000 and in seven years it grew to $800,000, then that means that we had an annual rate of return of approximately 5.9%.